Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 3.1 diffusion. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 3.1 you need to be able to describe the term diffusion, explain how substances diffuse into and out of cells, describe the importance of diffusion for living organisms and understand the factors that influence diffusion. There's no extended supplement for this lesson. Cells are reliant on a variety of substances, including nutrient particles, oxygen, water and mineral ions. Fortunately, substances are able to pass through cell membranes, either by some form of active transport, which we'll cover in topic 3.3, or by diffusion. So, diffusion is defined as the net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, as a result of their random movement. The molecules of a gas, a liquid, or a substance dissolved in a liquid all have kinetic energy, so they're constantly in motion. As a result, molecules spread out over time until they're evenly distributed, or their concentration everywhere is the same. When molecules diffuse, they always move from areas of high concentration, that is where there are lots of them, to areas of lower concentration, where there are fewer. When the concentration of a substance is higher in one area than another, we refer to there being a concentration gradient. For example, when a cell respires it uses oxygen, meaning the concentration of oxygen molecules in the cell decreases. This creates a concentration gradient that results in the diffusion of oxygen across the cell membrane and into the cell. Next, you need to describe the importance of diffusion of gases and solutes in living organisms. We'll begin with gases. Most living things need a reliable source of oxygen for aerobic respiration. In the lungs, oxygen diffuses from the alveoli, where concentration is high, and into the capillaries, down a concentration gradient. The circulatory system then delivers the oxygen throughout the body, where it diffuses from the red blood cells and into the cells of the tissues. At the same time, diffusion allows carbon dioxide to be removed, which can be harmful if it accumulates. Photosynthetic plants need carbon dioxide to produce glucose from sunlight. This diffuses through the many stomata in the leaves, into the air spaces in the mesophyll, and then into the palisade cells, which are densely packed with chloroplasts. Any oxygen needed for respiration and carbon dioxide produced as a byproduct also diffuse through the stomata of the leaves. In terms of solutes, it's believed that some dissolved mineral ions like nitrates and magnesium are able to diffuse across the cell membranes of root hair cells in plants. In the ileum of the small intestine, diffusion allows water-soluble vitamins like vitamin B to be taken up by the bloodstream. Finally, in the kidneys, some solutes like mineral ions and urea are reabsorbed, again by diffusion. Next, you need to understand the factors that influence rate of diffusion, which is the speed at which a substance diffuses through a cell wall or membrane. Number one, a larger surface area will result in faster rates of diffusion. For example, intestinal epithelial cells are covered with hundreds of tiny projections called microvilli, which maximize the surface area of the membrane and increase rates of absorption. Number two, a rise in temperature gives molecules and ions more kinetic energy, which increases rates of diffusion as it allows them to move faster and spread out more quickly. Number three, Steeper concentration gradients result in faster rates of diffusion. In other words, the greater the difference in concentration of a substance on either side of a membrane, the faster it will diffuse across it. Number four, greater diffusion distances result in slower rates of diffusion. For example, in the lungs, both the alveoli and the capillaries that surround them are only one cell thick. This reduces diffusion distance and speeds up the rate of gaseous exchange. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 3.1, diffusion. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 3.2, osmosis.